peptic ulcer disease peptic ulcer disease is a common disorder the incidence of which has been dramatically changed over the last few decades with better understanding of the physiology and pathology however the complications are still common and understanding the disease is important the physiology the stomach mechanically breaks up the ingested food and together with the action of the acid and pepsin forms a chyme that passes into the duodenum in the duodenum the acid is neutralized by the bicarbonate secreted by the pancreas and the osmolarity now becomes similar to that of plasma endocrine cells in the duodenum secrete cholecystokinin that stimulates the pancreas to produce trypsin and the gallbladder to contract this hormone also stimulates the bicarbonate secretion by the pancreas and inhibits the gastric acid secretion numerous factors are involved in gastric acid secretion like the neurotransmitters neuropeptides and peptide hormones the hydrogen ions are produced in the parietal cells by the proton pump histamine acting on the h2 receptors is the most important transmitter for acid production histamine is produced by the enterochromaffin like cells of the stomach classically three phases of gastric acid secretion occur the cephalic phase mediated by the vagus nerve was first described by russian pavlo in the gastric phase the chemicals in the food stimulate the g cells to secrete gastrin that act on the parietal cells distension of the stomach releases acetylcholine that could act both on the parietal cells as well as the enterochromatin like cells of the stomach in the intestinal phase production of secretin inhibits the gastric motility and acid production somatostatin produced by the d cells of the stomach also inhibits the acid secretion the gastrin released by the g cells in the stomach the histamine released by the gastric enterochromatin like cells and the acetylcholine released by the mast cells all act on the parietal cells proton pump to produce the acid hence the proton pump is the final common pathway pathology peptic ulcers were so named because uh, in addition to the acid pepsin is also required for the formation of the ulcers however the acid is more important all the acid levels are higher in patients with peptic ulcers as compared to normal subjects there is considerable overlap some genetic components are involved like the often quoted finding that ulcerations are more common in people with blood group o similarly social stress has also been implicated in etiology it is now widely accepted that infection with h pylori is the most important factor in the development of the peptic ulceration ingestion of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs is another very important factor cigarette smoking predisposes to peptic ulceration and increases the relapse rate the common sites of peptic ulcers are the first part of duodenum and the lesser curve of the stomach however they could also occur in the esophagus in the stoma following gastric surgery or even in ectopic gastric epithelium in meckel's diverticulum a chronic ulcer penetrates the mucosa into the muscle coat and causes fibrosis this could lead to deformities such as pyloric stenosis posterior ulcers could penetrate into the pancreas sometimes there may be more than one ulcer both anteriorly and posteriorly and these are referred to as kissing ulcers 
Sometimes the ulceration may be extensive and there may not be any mucosa at all. Malignancy in this area is so uncommon that surgeons could confidently take these as ulcers. Duodenal ulceration Over the years, the incidence of duodenal ulcers have come down remarkably. The decline started even before the introduction of H2 receptor antagonists and the trend is still continuing. The peak incidence also has shifted to an older age group and the difference in incidence between men and women is less marked now. The Helicobacter pylori Over the last 20 years, this organism has proved to be of overwhelming importance in the etiology of a number of common gastroduodenal disease such as chronic gastritis, peptic ulceration and gastric cancer. Bircher first described it in 1874 and in 1980 Warren and Marshall ingested the organisms to confirm that Cox postulates could be fulfilled with respect to gastritis. One of the characteristics of the organism is its ability to hydrolyze urea resulting in the production of ammonia, a strong alkali. This ammonia causes the antral G cells to produce gastrin. Infection also leads to the disruption of gastric mucus barrier by the enzymes produced by the organism. Some cytotoxins are also produced. Infection with H. pylori is the most common human infection and in some population it may be as high as 80 to 90 percent. The possibility of infection is inversely proportional to the socio-economic group. Helicobacter infection is amenable to treatment with antibiotics and in addition bis bismuth compounds are toxic to the organism. Clinical presentation The pain is in the epigastric region and is described as burning or gnawing and may radiate to the back, especially when there is penetration of the ulcer to the pancreas. Eating may or may not relieve the pain. The pain is intermittent and periodic. The periodicity may be related to the spontaneous healing of the ulcer. Vomiting is not a notable feature unless stenosis has occurred. With stenosis, the vomiting is described as being effortless, copious and projectile and containing old food particles. Both weight loss and weight gain have been described. Vomiting blood called hematemesis and passing altered blood known as melina could occur when there is bleeding from the ulcer. Melina presents as black, tarry stools. Visible gastric peristalsis and succussion splash are present with gastric outlet obstruction. Otherwise, there may not be any significant findings on clinical examination apart from mild tenderness. Investigation 